Hello guys, this is Donald's Movies, and in this video, I just wanted to give you guys a few ways on how you can get prepared for World of Draenor. So, if you didn't know, the alpha stopped and the beta just started recently, and not that many people are actually getting in, so unless Blizzard kind of knows you or you're just super lucky and get a random invite, you know, you probably won't be getting in, I'm sorry to say that, but I've actually been a fan of Warcraft for like 15 years now, and this is like the first time I actually got into a beta, and I was still super lucky, so you probably won't be getting in, but like there, there are a lot of things you can do until Volatz of Render drops. So in this video, I thought I'd show you guys, you know, a few things you can do in Volatz of Draenor. So because, you know, we've all been in 5.4 patch for like 9 months now, it's super boring, there isn't really all that much content you can do. Hopefully, you know, Worlds of Draenor should be out in like 4 or 5 months. Like, if it's the beta right now, it should be out soon, even though like a lot of content is not finished. But, you know, hopefully it will be out in 2014. So, in this video I will give you guys 5 things that you can do until that happens. Number 1. First and best way you can prepare for it is to get as much as gold as you can. So, as you may have noticed, you know, Blizzard kind of always introduces these gold sinks. Like in Mist of Pandaria, the last gold sink was that, you know, that Grand Expedition Yak. And it was really expensive. Hopefully, in Horrods of Draenor, you know, Mount Gold Sink shouldn't be as expensive as, you know, 120k gold but it could actually be pretty expensive so you know if you want to get that mount as soon as it comes out now would be like the best time you can spend you know your time to gather gold there is pretty much nothing you can do and when new content drops you, you don't want to be that guy like farming gold you just want to experience everything that is new and you know do all the new stuff so this would be like the best time to gather gold now if you don't really care to gather that much gold you know for something like that for example getting that expensive mount but you still want you know some gold to have like you should probably gather a few thousand gold your main goal should be like 50k gold and you know with that you should kind of be set you know with all the new content because i've been in the alpha and i've noticed i mean even just the garrison there's a lot of expensive stuff going on there for example all the plans cost like 5000 gold and there's a bunch of those plans now though i believe those plans you can get you know through exploration and quest but i feel like they will introduce some sort of a gold sink for the garrisons so you want to get prepared for it and you know just be ready once it comes out you know, apart from just garrisons, you know, there will be all sorts of stuff you can buy, like new pets, transmog gear, and a few other things here and there. So, you know, it's just best to be prepared, as right now, I don't see any better time, like, to farm up as much gold as you can. Number 2. Get all the achievements and things you didn't have by now. Now, there isn't really much I can say for this, you know, but all those, like, events and achievements, you know, those special achievements that you didn't do by now, now would literally be the best time to do them. Yes, I mean, there, I know there are some annoying ones and a bit tedious, but, you know, there is going to be a bunch of new content in Worlds of Draenor, and actually, possibly, I believe they said in BlizzCon that there will be, like, yearly expansions. And that means, like, we, we should be overwhelmed with content, I hope that happens. But, you know, yearly expansions would mean that there would be more patches and more content, new achievements. So, like, I don't see any better time to do all of that old content now and be prepared. So, you have few months until then, which should be a plenty of time, you know, to get as many of those achievement points as you can, you know, just before Worlds of Draenor. Number 3. Leveling alts. Now, <laughs> this is actually a bit hypocritical of me to say, you know, from my side, because I actually always start alts, you know, but always get bored of them and, you know, just quit them after a while. So I have like a bunch of these alts on different servers, you know, but I should be getting a few alts ready for World of Draenor, you know, release. So, you know, try to get as many alts as you can to level 90, you know, before World of Draenor. I mean, it's not the classic anymore. You can get an alt to level 90 in like a few weeks. If you don't play like all day, you know, if you play like all day, you can get it in a few days. You know, it's a lot easier. The experience points, you know, you get them a lot easier as well. So I don't yet see any excuse, you know, to not level them. Oh, I should probably do that as well, you know, soon. Now, most importantly, if you play just the Horde or the Alliance, you know, you should get that other factional. This, this is really important because, you know, trust me, you're going to want to experience both the Horde and the Alliance storyline. I mean, this expansion, from what I've noticed from the played, is going to be a lot different. And, you know, both the Alliance and the Horde starting zone quests 
are different and the storylines are completely different as well and this isn't going to be like Mists of Andaria or Wrath of the Lich King so you know where you start in like the same zone you just have different camps and pretty much all the quests are the same you know just with a different label on them so you would want to get that different alt in order to experience both storylines. Also, if you haven't pre-ordered Borots of Draenor, this would actually be the best time to do so, because you get a level 90 boost. Now, honestly, I wouldn't suggest using that level 90 boost on a brand new character, you know, because as I said, you can level characters a lot easier, and you can probably get to level 60 in like a few days. And if you actually have a level 60 and you use the level boost on him, like you will get both of your professions maxed out and that is going to be definitely a lot more useful because I don't know, I remember when I was like gathering engineering, you know, it costed me like 10, 15k gold and if you have like those professions maxed out for free, you know, with expansion, it, it is definitely going to help you out and you know, with the entire economy on your account, if you have like two professions, you can use it for gold making. And you can help out your other characters as well, you know, your main and pretty much everyone else. So, my advice would be get as many olds level to level 90 before World of Draenor. Number 4. Read up on the lore. Now, I should probably have just put this on the first spot, because I think it's one of the most important part. So, like, I made a few things that can help you guys out with this. Firstly, I made that video, you know, covering every single WoW novel in chronological order. You know, with all the explanations and pretty much everything you should check out. So, pretty much if you want to watch that, you know, what happens in all those novels, you know, just just a quick summary. You should probably check that out and, you know, get those books before World of Trend. I also made a summary of the War Crimes novel. You should probably check that out because that kind of explains, you know, how we transition from... Mists of Pandaria to Vorots of Draenor and it will explain you you guys you know how we actually got to to this Draenor like this alternate universe and also I made a brand new playlist where I kind of handpicked some of my older lore lessons and actually put them together in a new order and you know in a new order that should be relevant for Vorots of Draenor now these lore lessons include the Orkish clans, you know, all the warlords, the Draenei, you know, Velen, Naru, and you know, all sorts of related stuff. So you should probably check that out if you haven't watched all the lore lessons, as, you know, I, I'll have everything linked in the description. And, you know, that playlist will definitely, you know, get you up on the lore for Warlords of Draenor. And I really do feel that you should be up to your lore, you know, if you want to fully understand and experience pretty much everything that is happening in Warlords of Draenor. And lastly, number five. Now, number 5 is Battle Pets. Now, I know a lot of people really don't care too much about Battle Pets, you know, they think it's just Pokemon or whatnot, but it can actually be fun if you get into it. So, you know, while we're waiting for Warlords of Draenor, you should probably look into those Battle Pets if you haven't already, because, you know, once you get into it, you, you will actually see it's kind of fun, and there are so many pets that are hard to gather, so it's going to take some time to get all of them, and... I really don't see, as I mentioned before, I don't really see any better time to do all of this stuff than now because there isn't really much you can do now. And I made a few battle pet guides, I plan on doing a few more as well, you know, soon. And you know, there's a bunch of guides on the internet as well, for example you have Wowhead and WarcraftPets.com, so you can check that out, you pretty much are covered, you know, for every pet in the game. You know, so while you wait, you can do all of this stuff and, you know, get the pets as well for World of Zodan. So, that is the end of the list, and, you know, there are a lot of things you can do as well, such as professions, PvP, you know, some raiding, roleplay, and a few other things, you know, but I just wanted to kind of contain this information, and, you know, just give you guys a straight out a few things that you can do for World of Draenor, if you're not in the beta yet. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, you know, give me some feedback on what you think, and what sort of videos you guys would like to see. Also, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and, you know, just to stay updated to all the newest content, and, you know, just to see what's happening. And also, I started streaming on Twitch as well, so if you want to check that out, you know, and ask a few lore questions and a few questions here and there, you should check that out in the description below. Anyways, thanks so much for taking your time to watch this video, and I hope you had enjoyed. See you next time.